Uh, Madam, Madam President, last week uh, I was glad to see that a federal judge in Texas uh, issued a preliminary injunction against the president's executive order on immigration. Uh, this ruling, if upheld, and I believe it will be, reaffirms that President Obama was right when he said at least 22 times that he didn't have the authority to take the action that he now has taken on immigration. Uh, in December of last year, I joined an amicus brief uh, with Senator Cruz and Senator uh, Cornyn, and I believe the attorneys general from 26 states, uh, not the state of Missouri, but 26 states, I was glad that my joining that allowed Missouri to be represented uh, in support of this lawsuit brought by the state of Texas against President Obama's illegal decision uh, to allow amnesty uh, to be established. The brief states that the Obama administration exceeded their constitutional authority uh, and disrupted the delicate balance of power between the Congress, whose job it is uh, to pass the law, and the Congress and the president, whose job it is to carry out the law. Uh, executive means just that. The job of the executive is to execute the law. It's not to pass the law. There is no constitutional provision that anyone has been able to show me or that I've ever been able to find that says if the Congress doesn't do something, the president can decide it needed to be done and the president just do it on their own. There's so certainly no law that suggests that the president can just willfully ignore the law. Uh, the brief that uh, we joined uh, asserts that the Obama administration exceeded the bounds of their uh, so-called prosecutorial discretion. The idea that uh, uh, they can have some discretion about how vigorously they enforce certain laws is really, uh, both in this case and in the court ruling, uh, held up to the standard that it really should be allowed to met, meet. I mean, the idea that the president can say, uh, really, there's just too much law here to enforce, and we can't afford to enforce the law, but then by not enforcing the law, creates substantially more economic burden on the states and the federal government than enforcing the law would have created. Uh, by any standard, that makes no sense. This is not uh, a determination that at some level there are just too many um, violations of some law that's not very significant uh, that you could have some prosecutorial discretion. This is the law that impacts whether people can come into the country or not and whether they can stay in the country not being legally here. Uh, the bill that the Leader McConnell introduced this week uh, will put every senator on record on this topic. I look forward to a chance to vote on that bill and seeing my colleagues vote on this bill. Who will stand with uh, the president's clear power grab on immigration and who will stand by the rule of law? At least half a dozen Democrats and perhaps more have said they disagree with what the president did uh, with this November action. Uh, a vote on Senator McConnell's bill uh, will give them a chance to show whether they really disagree or not. It's specific to the November action. It's specific to the action that uh, the federal judge in Texas said put undue burdens on the state and exceeded the president's authority. Uh, as, a, as I have said a number of times, I'd like to see our uh, friends on the other side of the aisle be willing to debate this issue. Now, I've also admitted a number of times, if I was them and if the President of the United States has said 22 times he couldn't do something, I'd have some reluctance, I suppose, as they clearly do, to come to the floor and defend why now those 22 statements don't matter. If the Democrats would simply allow the Senate to begin debating the bill, uh, members on both sides of the aisle could offer amendments and we could actually be doing the job that we're expected to do as legislators. Unfortunately, they've decided to repeatedly say, no, we don't want to debate this bill. No, we're not going to go forward. No, we're not going to let the normal process work. No, we're not going to deal with the bill sent over by the co-equal branch of the Congress, the House of Representatives. Uh, and hopefully, uh, we'll see what happens as this debate moves forward and the president's uh, activities are held not only now to a standard uh, of law, but also his own standard. And uh, Madam President, I'd like to submit for the record the list of the 22 times uh, that the President has said uh, he didn't have the authority to do what he has now done. 
Without objection. Uh, let me just mention a few of those, but I'll, I'll submit all 22 for the record. As early as uh, March of 2008, uh, the president said, I take the Constitution very seriously. Uh, the biggest problem we're facing now is things that don't do, go through Congress at all. On uh, November of 2010, the president said, I'm the president, not a king. I, I can't do these things just by myself. I've got to have partners to do it. Um, in January of 2013, the president, again, still believes he's not a king because he says, I'm not a king. Uh, he says that at two different events on that day. He says, we can't simply ignore the law. Now, the truth is, in November of 2014, the president does decide we can simply ignore the law. The 22 times the president said we couldn't ignore the law, I agree with it. Uh, and for those who believe I don't find enough opportunities to agree with the president, here are 22 times that I agree with the president's view that he cannot do these kinds of things on his own and by himself. Uh, a year ago, uh, February the 14th, 2013, two years ago, the president said, the problem is I'm the president of the United States. Now, I could actually just quit right there and maybe that would say all I need to say, but of course he said the problem is that I'm the president of the United States. Uh, I'm not the emperor of the United States. We have certain obligations to enforce the laws that are in place. Uh, we, it, it goes on and I, you know, I, I get to that point and I'm just, I don't know quite how to explain as the president I'm sure doesn't know how to explain uh, what he said and what he has now done. Uh, on the, uh, in September of 2013, my job is the, in the executive branch is supposed to be to carry out the laws that are passed. Still in full agreement with what the president said uh, his job is, as late as, um, as late as August of this last year, the president says there are some things we can't do. Congress has the power of the purse, for example. Congress has to pass a budget and authorize spending. So I don't have a green light, he goes on to suggest, to do just whatever the president might like to do. That's basically what this debate is about right now. It's not about whether the Department of Homeland Security would continue to function. In fact, what I'd like to see here is the president engaged as the principal officer responsible for the administration of the government. I think something like that is what President Kennedy said uh, after the Bay of Pigs when he said, I'm responsible here because I'm the principal officer responsible for the administration of the government. Uh, the president created this problem. He created this funding problem for states. He created this funding problem for the federal government. He created this problem of exceeding uh, his uh, authority as President of the United States, but the President, once again, is missing from the discussion of how to solve the problem. Now, it could very well be, as is often the case, the person who would know how to solve the problem is the person who created it, but we're not hearing anything from that person, that, that, that person because clearly uh, people at the White House believe it is their temporary political advantage uh, to act like that people in the Congress don't want the government to function rather than to act like people in the Congress believe the president was right the 22 times he said he couldn't do what he's now done. I've heard several of my colleagues in the last few days, in fact, uh, one or two even this morning on early uh, news shows this morning say, we really need a way for the Congress to settle these kinds of disputes outside of the appropriations process. Well, one way to do that, Madam President, would be to pass the law that I filed in the last Congress uh, that the House of Representatives passed in a bipartisan way in the last Congress, the Senate not allowed to vote for or to vote on. I'd like to see us vote on it in this Congress, the Enforce the Law Act, which just simply does allow the Congress, if a majority of the members of the House or Senate believe that the President is not enforcing the law as written, to go to a judge and seek an early determination on that rather than wait for some, some aggrieved citizen who disagrees with a rule or regulation uh, to have to hire their own lawyer uh, after the rule is in effect and in the two years or so it might take to get that case to the Supreme Court, uh, other 
individuals impacted by the rule or regulation or trying to comply with it, only to find out later, as the court ruled a handful of times uh, during, this, uh, during the, the recent years of this presidency, the court ruled a handful of times, no, you don't have the authority to do that. They said to the president, they said, no, you don't have the authority to appoint people to the National Labor Relations Board when the Senate is, session, is in session just because you've decided somehow the Senate's not in session. You don't get to decide whether the Senate's in session, Mr. President, if they have met all the requirements to be in session. You particularly don't get to decide whether the Senate is in session if that same session of the Senate approves some things that you thought needed to be done and that was good enough for you. And then they said, and Mr. President, by the way, when you, when you appoint these people illegally, whatever rules and regulations they put forward aren't legal either. So the couple of years of businesses trying to comply with the National Labor Relation Act uh, rules and regulations, all that's to the wayside. Those rules are all gone. But that doesn't restore uh, the, the, the time, effort, money, needless compliance that happens when the president exceeds his authority or when the president's agencies like the Environmental Protection Agency decides that they can do something that they'd like to do without ever arguing before the Congress, we'd like the authority uh, to do this. And so passing the Enforce the Law Act would be a way to seek an earlier and quicker uh, remedy. Uh, it does appear to me that the federal judges are likely to decide pretty quickly at federal judges at uh, the Court of Appeals level and then the circuit level uh, that, no, Mr. President, you've gone beyond where you were. In fact, you were right the first 22 times, uh, not the November 2014 time that you decided if you don't like the law, you don't have to enforce the law. Uh, so, Madam President, I think we should move forward with that, with that ability that the Congress currently doesn't have, but also I think we should continue to express our desire for this process to work the way it's supposed to work. Uh, the House of Representatives that's supposed to, negotiate, supposed to initiate spending bills has done that. It's the job of the Senate to debate those, sending, those spending bills. Uh, it's the job of senators to offer amendments if they don't like them. Uh, and so far, uh, our friends on the other side have insisted that they don't want to do that part of this job. And maybe uh, we all should understand why they don't want to defend what the president's done because of all the times he said he couldn't do it. 